You should not be driving for Uber, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, Mark here with UberHints.com. After watching this video, if you're not convinced and you still think you might want to drive for Uber, find out what it's all about, how you can save some money, earn some money through incentives, guarantees, and bonuses. Go to UberHints.com and sign up and please use my referral code. But in this video, I may convince you not to drive for Uber. Why would I do that? For the past almost a year, I've been here several times a week telling you why you should drive for Uber, all the tricks, the strategies, the hints, the suggestions, and now I come on and tell you you shouldn't drive? Well, that's right. You see, everything isn't for every person. And let's face it, you may not be cut out to drive for a company like Uber or Lyft. In this video, I'm going to talk about several reasons why you should not drive for a rideshare company. So let's get started. The first reason is you're intimidated by traffic. Now that sounds kind of silly, but I know there are people that are thinking, well, I'll sign up and I'll just drive around my neighborhood. I'll just stick to the side streets. Here's the problem with that. Until you sign up, you may not be aware of it, but we don't know where any given ride is going to take us. When we pick somebody up, we're in the dark. So if you are not ready to take somebody any place they want to go, I mean within reason, right? But you don't know if you're going to go north, south, east, west, if you're going to be driving 20 miles away or two miles away. We really don't know that. So if you think, well, I'll just stick around my neighborhood and pick up a few extra dollars, this is not the job for you because you don't know where the rides are going to take you. No self-discipline. I think this is a big one. Those of you who watch me regularly know that I'm a real advocate of driving with a regular schedule. If you have a real job, a, a day job, um, you are told when you have to be at work, what time you have to punch in, what time you have to punch out, or you know, I'm just using that term figuratively, of course, but you are given a schedule. When you drive with a company like Uber, or Lyft, you're not given a schedule. You are on your own. And so it's up to us to create our own schedule. And if you're a person that doesn't have that kind of self-discipline, that says, ah, I'll drive later, and then later turns into tonight, and tonight turns into tomorrow morning, and before you know it, it's Friday, and you haven't gotten in your car the entire week. Well, if you're that type of person, that procrastinator, this is probably not the job for you. You have to have a certain degree of self-discipline if you're going to be successful as a rideshare driver. You don't like alone time. Now, this is um, really important because you're going to spend six, seven, eight hours at a time, maybe longer, in a vehicle largely by yourself. Yeah, you're going to have riders that are going to come in and you're going to have conversations occasionally, but sometimes those conversations are going to be over your shoulder, talking to people in the back, uh, in the back seat of your car. Many times people will get in, they'll put in their earbuds, they'll turn on music and ignore you completely. Sometimes people uh, are talking among themselves and you're just sitting up front almost invisible. Then there's going to be those times in between rides. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like alone time, this is absolutely not going to be the job for you. Easily bored. Now me, I, there is nothing that can bore me. But there's a lot of people, and I've seen it. I know I see it when I go to places like airports and other staging areas. They sit around and they do nothing. Again, if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm a real advocate of keeping busy and doing things and keeping your records and cleaning your car and doing things between the pickups. Um, so I stay real active. I can't imagine being bored between rides, but if you're the type of person that's going to just sit in your car and do nothing and maybe turn on the radio and listen to music, unless you really dig music, um, you might get bored. And if you bore easily, this might not be the job for you. On the other hand, if you are uh, like me, you're going to find plenty of things to do. I mean, I'm always thinking about what's my next video going to be. Sometimes I'll be recording those videos. I have yet 
to bring along my computer and actually edit the videos in the car. Because if I get a ping, I don't know what I would do with that computer. I guess run it to the back of the vehicle. I haven't done that yet, but why not? One of these days, I might do that as well. So um, you could bring a book to read. I guess you could bring a movie to watch or something. But if you get bored easily, you might want to consider another line of work. Get rich quick. This is not a get rich quick scheme. You're going to work. You're going to work smart. You're going to work steady and it can pay off. But if you think that you're going to just be seeing thousands of dollars pouring into your bank account without any work, no. Remember Shady Jade, our friend from PsyQ who tried to um, dissuade you from doing anything with Uber because it was a scam. Those are the words she used. It was a scam. Um, now, she wasn't exactly lying all the time um, in that, yeah, if you don't drive smart and you don't pay attention to what you're doing and you just think that this is the easy road to riches, you're probably going to be disappointed. But if you watch channels like mine, uh, my channel and others similar to it, you're going to learn the tricks, the strategies, and the ways that you can make money. It's not free, but in my opinion, it is easy. What, what's easier than sitting in your car driving around? I like my car. It's comfortable. I enjoy it. And speaking of your car, if you're concerned about mileage on your car, uh, you might want to think twice before you start doing rideshare because you are going to rack up the miles. What does that mean? That means you're going to have some expenses. You're going to be paying more frequent oil changes. There's going to be depreciation on your vehicle. You're going to be buying things like tires, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't want to get into all the details, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing because we do get to apply expenses to our taxes. That is the greatest benefit that a rideshare driver has is those tax benefits. In 2017, it's 53 and a half cents a mile. That's going to change. It'll go up and down with every year. Um, but the point is, yes, they're expenses, but they are also tax deductions. I think the tax deduction far outweighs the expense. Not only that, but for example, I drive a 2013 Toyota. Toyota is a fantastic vehicle. I see no reason why I'm not going to get 200 to 300,000 miles out of this vehicle because I maintain it on a regular basis. The best thing you can do is get that oil changed regularly. That's the most important thing you can do. Keep your car clean. Keep um, your filters changed, all of that, and your car is going to be in tip-top shape. Are you going to get top dollar when you trade it in? No, not if you decide to trade it in. Um, after a certain time and a certain amount of miles, depreciation is negligible. With my car, four years old, yeah, probably not that big a deal. Uh, there's going to be a point when you're talking, you know, a couple of hundred dollars difference in, rather than thousands of dollars difference. But then again, we have to look at our car as just another cog in that machine, just another piece of equipment, um, another prop, if you want to look at it that way. You need something in order to make money. That's your factory. If you're a poor record keeper, you might want to stay away. You're going to reap the benefits, the tax benefits, if you keep records, keep good, solid records. You might say, I'm sloppy, I'm disorganized, I can't keep records. Fortunately, there are a lot of apps that help you do it. My favorite is the Stride Drive app. Stride Drive is fantastic. You turn it on when you start driving for the day, you turn it off when you end. It keeps track of all of your records, gives you a weekly report. Every time you buy a meal, you put it in there. Every time you buy gas, you put it in there. Every time you uh, do a car wash, you get put it in. Uh, gas actually is included in the regular deduction, but it will keep a record and spit out a report. Fantastic. All you have to do at the end of the year, take those reports, compile them, and give them to your tax person. Tax person? I don't have a tax person. Trust me, it doesn't cost a lot of money. I have a fantastic tax preparer. I don't think I pay her $250 to prepare my taxes. I have pretty complex taxes because I have two uh, side businesses. And, um, you know, I would rather pay for that than to spend that same time and money. I can now go out and spend that time that I'd be preparing my taxes, driving and making the money to pay her. I'd rather do that than prepare my own taxes. But um, 
If you do get Stride Drive app, please use my referral code down below. Um, I don't think anyone ever signed up with it yet for me, but it doesn't cost you any more if you use a referral code. And if you heard about it from me, I would, I would really appreciate it. Insurance, health insurance, and maybe even driving insurance. Now, uh, when we have our car insurance, there's only a little window that we really have to worry about. My regular insurance, uh, does it kicks off as soon as I turn on my app. And then as soon as the app's off, I'm back in my regular insurance. And believe me, if you get in an accident and you try to um, you know, skirt the issue and say, I wasn't driving, they'll find a way to check and see if your app was on and then you might not be covered. So don't try to scam the system. Now, Uber's insurance kicks in once you pick up a driver. So that little window is a time when you're active, your, your app is turned on, but you haven't picked anybody up yet. So uh, you might wanna think about getting that supplemental insurance to cover that little window. Now, there are several insurance companies uh, that do it. Um, just look into it. I think Progressive uh, has a plan that will, that will cover that window. And uh, your chances are you're going to get in an accident during that window is, is slim anyways. If you drive smart, you're not just driving around aimlessly between pickups, right? You drive, you, you drive someone to their location, drop them off, and then you uh, find a place to wait for another ride. Because if you're driving around just waiting for a pickup, you're wasting gas. And there's no reason for you to do that. But you should be aware of car insurance and health insurance. If you don't have another job that gives you insurance, you're going to have to buy insurance. Now, sometimes people ask me, Mark, how can that Stride Drive app do all this stuff for free? The reason is because they also um, are, I don't know if they're an actual insurance company, but they, are, um, they do provide health coverage. So um, you can look into that too through the uh, Stride Drive health coverage. Are you easily discouraged? If you're easily discouraged, this might not be the job for you because uh, this has highs and lows. There's going to be days you get out and you're so excited, you don't even finish a drive and the next ping comes in. I just love it when that happens and I don't have any downtime. I go from one to the next to the next. As a matter of fact, there's times I almost think I like that better than surges because I would rather keep driving and have all of that um, adding up. Because remember, every time that you get a new drive, you start out with that base pay, right? Sometimes that even works out better than surges. But if you don't have um, that ability to ride the high waves along with the low, you might get easily discouraged. In the end, I think it all pays off, it evens out, and um, you know, I usually end up having pretty good days and pretty good weeks. But there are times, you know, you're self-employed, uh, just like anything, you know, you might own a restaurant and there's gonna be nights when nobody comes in. So if you're easily discouraged, this might not be the job for you. So there you have it. I think I have gone over eight reasons why you shouldn't drive. Still not convinced? Maybe you should give it a try. You know, you've got very little to lose. If you sign up, drive for a week, hit your uh, goal, get your bonus, get your guarantee, whatever the incentive is, you can always quit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for giving me the thumbs up. Please leave your comments below. As always, I love it when you subscribe. I'm Mark with uberhints.com.